I play Jack Curry. He is a dreamer. He's a man child. He lives with his mother. He's 33 years old and he's threatened to get kicked out if he doesn't get a job. So he goes job hunting and he bumps into this beautiful girl named Kate, played by Anita. Oh, come on! Am I invisible now too? I'm sorry, are you blind? Seriously? And he falls in love with her and decides to work for her driving celebrities from Nollywood to the Gyama Awards. I auditioned for a commercial for a bodé that he was going to produce, which um, we haven't filmed yet. And he met me and we sat there and talked for two hours at the meeting. And he said he wanted to do something with one of his friends, Moses. And he was going to be in town in October for the Guillermo Awards. And he showed me what it was. And I was really impressed. And he talked really passionately about it. And he says, I don't want to just give awards to movies. I want to make a movie. And we didn't know what it was going to be. So he said, I'll call you in about two weeks. We'll do a movie together. And people say that all the time. You know, people talk a lot. I didn't know how serious he was. You know, I'm like, okay, yeah, we'll do a movie. Yeah, yeah. So two weeks later, he had a script with 112 scenes in it. And I was like, oh, he's serious. Okay, so. And it was hilarious. Like, it was one of the best scripts I've read as far as a comedy goes. Because it wasn't just funny. It was like, there's friendship in there. There's a love story. There's action. And I had seen the trailer for Stalker that Moses directed. And I was really impressed with that. And I've worked with a lot of people in Houston, about 90% of the people that make movies in Houston. And that looked probably better than most of their movies, you know, no, I mean, with all due respect, it just looked cinematic, you know, like it was universal. So I was like, okay, I'm going to work, I would love to work with Moses, you know. And this character is just insane, like he's almost like a mix between Travis from Taxi Driver meets, uh, like, Jim Carrey. yeah, well, Jim Carrey, Bill Murray, what, like, it's just a parody, you know. It's a parody of different of drivers and there's this whole uber world of drivers that drive <laughs> celebrities from all over around and I think within the first day he'd probably be fired which is what made it so funny you know because he does go to jail and he you know gets in trouble with his boss but um, when I first walked on set I didn't know what to expect because we had a read through and I didn't know I've never made a movie like this before you know I've been in features I've been in shorts I've been all kinds of characters but I've never made a movie where it felt like we were doing um, it was very like uh, avant-garde because 90% of this movie is real. We really were chased by a cop. We really did go to a hospital. We went to a jail. I really did eat spicy food. And it was, it's an experience I'll never forget. And the one thing I love about it is it's a universal market. Like I don't just want to make movies for Houston or for America. I want to be able to make movies around the world. So I would love to be a part of the Nollywood culture. Jim is one of the best actors that I've worked with. You know, he loves improv and he's very serious. You know, he likes to have a good time, but when it's time to roll, he gets into his character like that. Like he could be joking around, you know, telling a story and then all of a sudden action, he's, he's a character. Wait, let me get this on film. This is going to be so cool. I'm going to put this on YouTube. I'm serious. Yeah, you're serious. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. If I survive this, you're dead. You're not good, you're done. The first time I met Evan, it's even quiet and not talking, sitting across the room. I remember what I told you that day, but I said, this man has a look, I don't know about the delivery, but he has that quiet intensity that good actors have. I can tell a good actor anytime, the quiet intensity, you know, just waiting to show what he had. For my first scene, I called you again and I said, where did you find this man? You know, I'm sure he's not aware of all these things. And um, I posted something on Instagram, which I've not done of any actor of late, I said this might be, well, this is arguably the funniest person, funniest actor I've had I made a movie with. And I don't put out stuff like that. His, his expressions, I'm just talking about his expression now, physically. Looking at him as an actor, his expression says a lot, even before he, he takes it a single line. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, that's a very important attribute for uh, an actor, every actor, to have. And then it's even more important for a comedy actor, because... In the, your face sets you apart from the, mm -hmm. the usual actor. People, you need to look funny before you even try to be funny. Mm -hmm. That's what I feel. What's and that? Jack has this mm -hmm. going for him. And uh, he, I mean, <laughs> all the actors, we, we, we've had him um, uh, play alongside a lot of um, top actors, actresses from Nollywood, and everyone said the same thing. 
they would always come up to me and say, where did you find this guy? That was like one thing everybody say. On the first take, same thing, Nadia, same thing, Inse said, Jim, everyone that got on the set, I mean, the first thing they did, the first take of the first thing they ever did with him, they, they would come and say, where did you guys find this, this guy? Because he was phenomenal in, in his delivery of his character. And uh, I think we have a, 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 a hit coming and we have a, a superstar in our hands. You actually called a taxi? Yes. Is this 1990? And I was actually born in, in the States. What state? Edo State. Trust me, it's going to shock a lot of people. Uh, I can imagine the resonating um, laughter in theaters across the, the world, and I, I, I'm just excited uh, as we go to the next phase of this process. Loved working with Nadia. You know, once again, she played herself like so many actors in this film, but every actor that played themselves became a character like Jim did. You know, it's a version of who they are, not really. And she was a trooper, you know. She was uh, willing to, you know, make fun of herself, and there was a lot of uh, humbleness to her. You know, we're, it's a very key scene in the film. AY was awesome too, you know, he, there's a lot of confidence in that scene, you know. And what I remember about AY's scene, uh, you know, he's, he's very hilarious, you know, he's, he's hilarious, and uh, he kept giving me money that was prop money, which was real hundred dollar bills. Mm -hmm. And I remember I would forget to give it back to him. And he's like, make sure I get that back, you know, so, <laughs> so yeah. And he's great. I, I would love to work with him again, everybody again. I hope, you know, it was, it was an honor. She's been known to be the Meryl Streep of Nollywood, and she, she, she loved that, you know. <laughs> she, oh yeah, she loves that. She loves that. Now we know? need to make fun of some yeah. people. That's what yeah. that's of it. Well, we showed up. Oh, she loved yeah. me, Billy. <laughs> it was that. Meryl it was, Streep. <laughs> that scene was so random because my character's supposed to be late, and we really were late to get her and you know, to film that scene. So she was as soon as I get out of the car, she's in character. She never broke character until we <laughs> said cut. Off we went to the airport to do insane scene. I got there first with the camera all set up, and we were waiting for Jack. And so when Jack arrived, I told Jack already as he was approaching, Jack, you arrive, it's action. You're, as you arrive at the airport, I'm set up with the camera to shoot, it's action. So Jack and Nse never ever met until they met to do the scene. And there was not even a take, a dry rehearsal take. It was straight into the scene. So Jack arrives at the airport to pick Nse. Nse is standing there above the camera set up. And that's it. We go straight to the scene. And it was magical the way these two people connected and just played the role like they've rehearsed it for the longest. Like they just started talking. I'm like, what? It's so, it was so beautiful. And uh, I think uh, we should contact the Guinness Book of Records for that and <laughs> have them document that, <laughs> that more. What? <laughs> <laughs> we should actually contact Guinness Book of Records. Have them document that moment yeah, as yes. the scene that was unrehearsed. The actors never met, and it's a great scene. Today, Chris, wait a minute, you keep me forever, forever. You actually called a taxi? Yes. Is this 1995 or no, what? It's, that's what we call them in London, taxis or cabs. You're from London? No, I'm Nigerian. Yeah, Nse, Nse team, Nse Ikwe, Nse Ikwe team is a great actor. And, and she also asked the same question, like, who's this guy? After the first take, she came on and who's this? I'd like to do a, a longer, <laughs> I mean, a, a bigger film with him. And, uh, yes, yeah, so it, it, it's all, we have, you guys, you, you guys should, um, you, have, you have something big, something hilarious, something funny, something you all would love to see coming. It's called American Driver. Um, it's a one-of-a-kind storyline it's never been done ever anywhere um it's um it, it's pretty much pretty much looks like a reality show <laughs> yeah it, it, it looks it yes is, right? it does yeah, yeah I mean, more, it's more like a scripted reality show. yeah it's like yeah but i mean there's but then it's not because it's a movie but you have people being playing themselves and acting all real and not what have you. Uh, the the events are real. I mean, in terms of the, the, the award show, award show is 100% real. It's called the Guillama. And the story behind it is this driver is employed to pick up all the celebrity Guillama. You know, Moses, he comes with a huge track record, you know, and this movie's nothing like Stalker. And it was interesting to watch him go from 
a, a serious film to a comedy and he got it instantly like he was totally generous about improving and if he didn't like anything that I said he would just tell me not to say it like and he would let me say a lot of it and he had specific things he wanted and it became almost like a uh, we were like musicians just working with each other you know like this is funny and because comedy really is about timing and chemistry like everyone thinks oh you just walk up there and you're funny like there's so much science to it and, and Moses understood that he understood uh, where I was coming from and uh, I'd love to work with him again probably one of the the hardest days of this project was when we uh, were robbed and it's it's not good on any day but we we had a great film day that day you know we had a scene that we were filming with Nadia and my friend Michael Tula and it was an added scene but we felt good about it we were going to come back the next day and finish it and they were all happy I'd never seen them so happy and and when they called me and said that they were robbed it was just heartbreaking because you know they didn't just steal from one person they stole from all of us you know they stole from Cedric from from Moses from Baudet and from Jim and me because you know we, everyone who's put work into this film they stole from. We were upstairs having a production meeting and that's what you guys don't know about. And robbers broke into one of our production car and took all the equipment we had. Yeah. It's also equipment worth almost hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. And yet the next day, the very next day without saving our breath. Just the next day we, we thought about it. People were upset about it, even depressed about it. We went to sleep, completely, completely disconnected. We were completely discouraged from this. But you know what, the next day, we called each other and said, listen, we can't let this go. That was our 20-something day of shoot. Yeah. We can't let this go. I mean, come on, man, we're champions. We can't let this break us down. While the police report was still fresh and not out yet, it was still being investigated, we went back but mind you, this equipment is owned by us completely as an entity. We went back, rented equipment exactly to the specifications that we used before, and went back and completed this movie. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if we were going to take a break for two months or come back. or I. But the next day, like Jim said, you know, we went back to work. And they were like, no, we're not going to, we've come too far, we're not going to stop. You know, we love this movie, and mo a movie, it's not just about the lead actors or the director or the producer or the writer, it's, it's a community, it's a family, you know. You see a movie or a TV show, it, it's a community of people that come together to make it, and it's, it took a lot of courage to finish this movie, and by the second day, you, you couldn't even tell what happened, you know. Because there's no point in finishing a movie if you're not going to be confident, especially a comedy. So, you know, we went, by the time we got to Inse's scene, uh, it was... It was a comedy again, you know, we were being funny.